starting with 20, which has the lowest pH. So if we're talking about a low pH, first pass, we're going to look for acids and get rid of anything that's not acidic. So A, HCl, that's a strong acid. B, NaOH, that's a strong base. So this is in fact going to have a high pH. Same thing with C. Um, it's a base, maybe even a strong base, but the point is high pH either way. H2SO4, that is an acid, so that's in the running. D, a sugar, is going to have basically no acidity or basicity. It's going to be essentially pH 7, neutral. So looking now at A versus D, we've got two strong acids. Their concentrations are the same. So how do we know which is going to lead to the lower pH? Remember that H2SO4 has got two hydrogens, it's got two H pluses per molecule. So that is going to lead to, given the same concentrations of HCl and H2SO4, that's going to lead to a lower pH because you're going to have pretty much, it's not exactly this, but more or less two H pluses per mole compared to one H plus per mole. And so that's going to make the concentration of H plus in D higher than in A, and that's what's going to push the pH lower. So 20 is going to be choice D. Which has the highest concentration of OH minus ions? Again, the same idea between B and C. Both of these are bases, both pretty much strong bases, but because C has two OH minuses, it's diprotic in the same way that A is, or 20 is, uh, or shall we say H2SO4, you're going to get more OH minus ions in solution for a given concentration of BaOH2 than you do NaOH. And so this will be a little bit more basic and therefore have higher OH minus concentrations. So 21 would be C. Which has the freezing point closest to zero? So this gets into the colligative properties, which is not a huge topic on this test, but you do need to know the basic idea. And I believe I do cover this in the factoid sheet. And the basic idea is as your dissolved particles increase, so as dissolved, the number of dissolved particles increases, various things happen, such as the freezing point gets lower. It's called freezing point depression. So as the number of dissolved particles increases, the freezing point gets lower and lower and lower away from the typical freezing point of water, which is zero. So if we want the one that has the closest freezing point to zero, that means we want the one with the fewest number of dissolved particles that will have the least effect on the freezing point. So if you look at each of these options, if you look at HCl, when this dissolves, it dissolves into H plus and Cl minus. That's two particles per mole, approximately. It's, in this case, it would be basically that. But, you know, we're going to do some rounding here. So it's about two. And that is going to be have some certain effect on the freezing point, whatever that might be. What matters is relative to the others, how many particles do the others have? And whichever has the fewest will be the answer. NaOH similarly will dissociate into Na plus and OH minus. So that's two. BaOH2 is approximately three. It's not exactly. But again, it's bigger than two. And so that will have a more pronounced effect on the freezing point than A or B. D, same idea, about three. So again, more of a pronounced effect. But this sugar doesn't dissociate at all. When it dissolves in solution, it just dissolves as that whole molecule, C12H22O11. There is no dissociation. So it just dissolves as one particle. It's a big particle, but it's one particle nonetheless. And so that will have the less, the, excuse me, the least effect on the freezing point among the other colligative properties. And that's why the answer to 22 is E.